Very lucky to meet Shirin Neshat at Gallery Diri Mart in Istanbul. Shirin is taking us through her amazing show and thank you very much, Shirin. Yes. I'm so privileged. Thank you, Shirin. Oh, you're so welcome. <laughs> yeah. um, so I just explained a little that these are about 111 photographs that were all shot in New Mexico in the United States. And really what I had in mind is this group of photographs are like a portrait of America, a portrait of a nation. And I specifically photograph people of diverse backgrounds, uh, Native Americans, African Americans, uh, Hispanic, Mex uh, Hispanic immigrants, and Anglo, and people who are poor to functional to not functional, and young and old, and uh, women and men. So this whole group of photographs <laughs> and, so, and what does it look like to you? It looks pretty sad. Sad. <laughs> Why? Well, um, well, I have to say that um, obviously this is from the perspective of an Iranian who is an immigrant, and I mainly focused on people who are also marginalized and um, and not well to do, not the ones that the bottom of the society, you know, um, but I feel that um, there is a melancholy or, or sadness in their expressions, maybe would be the same on my own expression as someone who is uh, full of fears, anxieties. And anyway, it's the first time I make work about America, and the first time that I use calligraphy, Farsi calligraphy, in the background or on the images of people who are not Middle Eastern but are Western or American. And what, what are you writing there? Their thoughts or their story or their dreams? You know, the whole project is called Land of Dreams. So I was that lady in the photograph who is also the actor in the video. I photographed people and um, asked them for their dreams. I asked them for their dreams. So the writing, uh, some of the bolder ones, are just their names, first and last name, and place of birth and date of birth. But the ones with the smaller writings are interpretations of these people's dreams, but from an ancient book from 11th century in Iran. Meaning that if there are different categories of dreams, you know. Um, Can we pick one of them? Sure. Yes. If you really get close, these are all original handwriting directly written on the photographs. And these are paintings that are also come from the same book. And, and no Photoshop. Nothing is Photoshop, no. And so the idea was that for the first time, I bring my signature and calligraphic work on the surface of images and portraits of people who are American. And us Americans, Iranians, are normally enemies. Here we find a union, but become very close. <laughs> How wonderful. Can you translate something, just a small? I couldn't, uh, because this, um, these are written like exactly from the pages of manuscripts. Yes. And they're from 11th century, so they're slightly Arabic, actually. You could read it better than me. But there, we never wanted to translate any of it because this book has never been translated into English. But basically, uh, let's say a person, their dream was about death or falling or, or something. We, this book has different categories of interpretation. You will see in the video. What is the name of the book? It's Wonders of Creatures. Creatures of wonders. Creatures of creatures wonders. Of wonders. And, and, but that's a very loose and poor translation. Uh, it, it's actually, I, I, I can show you, it's like, it has an Arabic name. Because uh, the writer, who comes from the same city as mine, the title is Arabic. But I will show you so, But the same book, the video, is now about this character, this woman, who is me, the photographer from Iran going to New Mexico 
door to door to people's homes, knocking at the door and asking if she could take their portraits and ask for their dream. So the so the, the video is very much a part of this work. And and why the number of works? Was it 111 works? Is there I any? I took 200 uh, photographs, but uh, it, it it really was a matter of mathemat. You know, we really couldn't uh, have the money to produce more, but we could have made the whole room because uh, the the people were so beautiful and uh, the expressions were so powerful. I I would have loved to have extended it more. It's wonderful. But in the video. So she works like a spy for an Iranian colony. It's kind of surrealistic. It's an absurd satire movie. But she works with a colony with all these Iranian people who are spying on American people's dreams. So she's collecting people's photographs and dreams and goes back to the colony to give it to the Iranian people who then start interpreting American people's dreams. So there is this kind of absurdity of this what are your dreams, Shirin? My, my dream, I think, essentially is never seeing home again and displacement, I would say, the, the idea of loss of motherland, loss, loss of mother. Um, I have many dreams and I've made videos of my dreams, but nightmares more, I think, than my dreams. And where is this show going after? The show has been traveling a lot. It started in Los Angeles, went to London, New York, is now in Toronto, it's here. It will go to New Mexico, where the people are. So it is going to Japan. So it's traveling a lot. Thank you very much. I hope, to be <laughs> I hope so. And I hope to see you in Beirut one day. Do you want to tell the Lebanese something? Yes, I, I, mean, I think, first of all, Iranian people have a love affair with Beirut, which is classically known as a place that really promoted intellectual life in the Middle East. Uh, a lot of Iranian people, the second generation, were educated in Beirut. Uh, and we know the, the complexity, the political complexity of the Christians living with Muslims and then the whole um, secular versus non-secular Islam. Then you've had the refugees and all of that. And, and so endless trauma, endless trauma. Yet, yet the culture is so alive, so rich. The people are so wise. Even young people who I was teaching and there were like some sounds going outside like I thought it was explosions ah we've gotten used to it we're, we're just this is a way of life it's not that uncommon with Iranian people I think but maybe maybe worse but Iranian people have a love affair for Lebanon maybe after the 4th of August it would be sometime nice if you come and uh, and uh, meet the dreams the explosion, the almost oh, yes. atomic explosion. So people have new dreams now. And it would be very interesting for you to come and explore. I would love to. And I think that what's inspirational about Lebanese people and the culture is the, the strength and the, the resilience. The resilience to whenever there is a tragedy and hardship, is one after another, they rise again. I think it's because what they think about it. And, and I have to say, as Iranian people, we've had a very dark, dark history. Maybe a hundred years we've been in dictatorship and separated. And, and, and so we really identify and care for people in Beirut and all over Lebanon who have gone through such hardship. And we apologize for the intervention of the Iranian government in supporting the enemy. So it's not enough to be said about that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Shirin.